Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. If you are looking for an alternative to paying Apple or Google a monthly fee for cloud storage, this device from Synology, a new thing called the B Station, might be worth taking a look at. This looks like an external hard drive, but it connects to your network and it replicates the functionality you might find on Dropbox and other cloud service providers and that you can store files on here and keep them synced with your computer and also back up photos from your phone, among other things. And this is from a company that makes much more complicated devices like this for big companies and tech enthusiasts. This is very much a consumer-focused device that is designed to be as plug-and-play as possible. So if you are familiar with Synology products, I know a lot of you who follow me are, this is probably not for you, but for people that want something super simple, this delivers, I think, a very easy to work with solution for avoiding a monthly cloud subscription fee, and you'll likely make back a return on your investment after about a year. We're gonna take a closer look at this and see what it's all about in just a second, but I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this was provided to the channel free of charge by Synology. They also sent this to the channel ahead of its release, so we did have some time to get this review ready for when it was available. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. They did not review or approve what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and they also did not sponsor this video, although they have sponsored videos in the past. So with that out of the way, let's get to it and see what the B Station is all about. Now the price point on this comes in at $199. There is no subscription fee for this, so once you buy it once, you never have to pay for anything else again. They give you a three-year warranty on it as well. Right now, the only version they have is a four terabyte version, which is the one I have here on the desk. And what you do is just plug it in, scan a QR code, and then it will pretty much set itself up. You do have to create an account with Synology. You can point it at your Apple or Google account to speed up that process. And once you're done with that, the device boots up and is available to you through the B Station apps. And I'll show you those in a minute. So it is much quicker to get up and running. You don't have to piece together hard drives and everything. You take it out of the box, plug it in, and you are good to go. It is, as you can see here, very Spartan, and it doesn't have much in the way of ports either. Now, this does not work with a Wi-Fi connection. It has to be directly connected to Ethernet. So you could situate this maybe next to your router and plug it in with a hard wire. But if you have phones and computers and everything on your network that are wireless, it'll of course work with this. Once it's on the network, it's accessible to wired and wireless devices, but the connection for this device is wired only. You have two USB ports here on the back for attaching external storage. You can back up to external drives and back external drives up to this, and I will show you that in a little bit. This is a reset button to reset everything, and here is your power switch, and that is pretty much it beyond the power supply that you plug into it. And on the front here, as you can see, it just has a light. So that is it uh, from the hardware standpoint. Let's take a look now on my computer and see what you get. Now there are apps available for Windows, Mac, and iOS and Android. So you've got mobile apps and desktop apps. I'm gonna start with the desktop app here on Windows. So after you install the desktop app and connect it to your B station, what you will get on your hard drive on your computer is a folder that's going to sync up with your B station and it will sync wherever you are in the world and you don't have to open up any ports on your router or configure anything on the network side. I've got a very lockdown situation here and this has been able to work for me when I'm home and when I'm not at home. It just kind of works like a cloud service does. And that's something Synology has been able to do quite well on their other devices. Now, when we look inside my B Station folder here, what you will see are the files that are currently on the B Station. And it's also smart enough not to download them unless I'm going to be using them. So for example, I created this file on my computer and saved it to the B Station folder. And now this file is on this computer, but also on the B Station. And any other computer that I have logged into this account will also have that file available. So you could work on a file on the laptop, save it, close it, go over to your desktop computer, and everything will be right where you left off on the laptop. You do have to be careful about collisions where you've got the file opened in two different places. 
but if it's just you doing the work, you should be okay here. And again, it's very similar to how file syncing works with OneDrive and Dropbox and others. And that's pretty neat, I think, for making this simple, and it doesn't matter where you are when you are working on these files. Now, if you want to save hard drive space on the local computer, but keep files on the B station, you can do that here by excluding folders. So for example, I could say, I don't want the backup folder getting synced to this computer. And what'll happen here now is that that folder will still be on the B station, but this computer won't get those files synced up. So that is the first feature of this and one that I think you'll be doing quite a bit with. The next thing here is that you can also sync folders with the B station for backup purposes. So for example, I set up this folder here called temp work and every time the folder on this computer changes and this folder is not in the B station folder, it will synchronize the files over to the B station. So I can select the folder here on my computer and I can say sync with B files or backup. So a sync is a two-way, which means I could change the files on another device and have them update in that folder. Or I could treat this as a pure backup, which would only take the files from this computer and back them up to the B station so I could restore them later. So if you're looking to back up your PC, for example, this is the option that I would choose is backup to B files. And I can select a couple of different folders here click apply, and this will now keep that folder synced up with the B station. So every time I add a file to one of these two folders on this computer, those files get sent to the B station. And it works a little differently than uh, this does because this is kind of like your Dropbox folder that works everywhere. This is more specific to the computer, again, mostly for backup purposes. And then of course you have your settings here where you can make some adjustments, not much at the moment, and because a lot of this is software-based, I would imagine they will add things as time goes on. They also give you a log so you can see what's happened uh, within the folders and files that you are syncing. So that is the PC experience. Pretty basic here, but that's the goal, to find something that replicates the core functionality of a cloud service without having to store your files in the cloud or pay anybody to keep them there. Let's take a look now at the mobile app. Now at the moment, there are two different B Station apps for mobile devices. You have the Files app here called B Files, and you also have B Photos that I will show to you next. Now this is roughly the same on the iPhone as it is on the Android side. This is very much like how the Mac desktop application is similar to the Windows application we looked at. The one difference though, on the mobile app is that at the moment, while I can view files that I have stored on the B station with my iPhone, I can't edit them and save them back to the B station, but on the Android side, it's possible to do that. So keep that in mind right now. There's not a lot of edit functionality that you'll have with your documents, which surprised me because the regular Synology devices, their more advanced devices, have the ability to hook into the Apple file system to allow you to make edits like that. So that's something I'm sure they will add or work on in the future. So in the meantime, you can add files to the mix here from an iPhone. You can view files, but you can't really edit them. You can also take a look at the files that you've backed up from your computers. So here earlier, we had set up that backup on the Windows computer and all of the files that were saved on that computer and backed up are now available to me on my phone. One other thing you have access to on the mobile app here are some management tasks. I'm gonna demo this on the computer because it's easier to show, but know that you can go in and initiate backups and do some other things while you are on your phone, no matter where your phone might be. Let's take a look now at the Photos app. So here is the B Photos app, and I've got a few photos here loaded in from my phone. One of the neat things about this is that it preserves live photos on the iPhone. So if I tap on the little live icon there, it will perform similar to how Apple Photos performs. I can even just keep my finger over that to enable it. Additionally, it has facial recognition features that they say are processed on device without having to go back out to the cloud. So it can recognize objects and pets, for example, and faces. So right here, I've got a photo of me with a few stars from BattleBots. 
and I met them at the uh, CES show. And if I hit the I button here, you can see that it recognized their faces. And if I tap on my face here, it'll pull up other photos where my face appears, like this one. So it does have some rudimentary AI recognition features, things that are very similar perhaps to what you would experience with one of those cloud services, but you've got it all stored locally on your B drive here without having to go out to the cloud. And again, they're claiming that it is processing all of that on its built-in processor. Additionally, I was surprised to see that it supports raw files. So this is an NEF file that came out of my Nikon camera. I really need to use it more often because the pictures are so great out of that. Um, but as you can see here, it is uh, a full-on RAW file that I'm able to see and work with. And once the facial recognition runs through whatever cycle it goes through, my daughter's face here will be accessible as well. Now, there is a photo backup feature that I don't have enabled at the moment. But what this will do is automatically back up your photos every time the phone has a Wi-Fi connection. So you can back up new photos only, so if you want to start at a date certain forward, you can set it up that way, or you can have it go back through and back up your entire library. And that, of course, might take a while if you've got a lot of photos to back up there. You also have some additional settings here because in addition to photos, it also backs up videos. You can restrict it to photos only if you want. You also have the ability here to back up when you're not on Wi-Fi, just using your cellular connection, but if you have a data cap, I would suggest you leave this on and wait till you get home before your files get synced up. And you can also skip duplicate files on here too. It doesn't look like it will delete the photos on your phone after they are backed up, so you may have to manage that yourself. But all in, it's actually a pretty nice little photo app here that is relatively simple, but replicates, I think, a lot of the features that people use the most. And before we move on, the search feature I found to be pretty usable as well. So for example, if I go up here and do a search for dog, I will find a dog here. I can also find photos that were taken at night. It's not perfect, it's all a matter of how its AI is able to detect things, but you're able to work with that. Additionally, uh, you can search by location. So if I type in Nevada, where a lot of these photos were taken here and do a search, it'll pull down that from the metadata in the photos themselves. So you do have, I think, a very nice alternative here to what you would pay for on a monthly basis with a cloud provider. So let's take a look now and see what you can access with a web browser. We're going to start with the simple stuff and then we'll look at some of the more technical features that you can enable with this interface. Now when you pop in, you've got the option to look at B files as well as B photos. I'll show you the photos in a minute here. And so, as you can see, the files that we've been using with our B-Sync folder are right here. I can look at this with the preview option, for example, for files that support that. I can't edit anything on here, but I can share it with other people. I can download to my computer. And one feature that is really useful here is that the B station will keep revisions of your files as you edit them. So for example, on this text file, which I edited on my Android phone a little while ago, I can go here and look at its version history, and you can see I've got three different versions. So I can go back in and download this file, for example. I could restore it, so if I accidentally erase something in my file, I've got other versions of it that I can restore back to. So as you can see there, I just restored an older version of the file. So that could be very useful if you have trouble. And I think the only place you can do this restoration is inside of the web app here. So that's something to keep in mind. I can look at the computers that I'm backing up. One other neat thing the B station will do through the web interface here is allow you to back up your cloud storage. So in addition to using this as a cloud storage device, it can also back up your cloud storage. And right now it supports Dropbox, Google Drive and OneDrive. And like the backup option we saw before, you can have it sync in a two-way fashion or just download everything as it changes from the cloud drive. Now, USB backup allows you to back up your external drives to the B station. I've got one right now plugged into its USB port on the back. And if I click backup now, 
what this will do is basically take everything that's on that drive and store it safely on the B station. You just heard the B station start beeping, so it actually has an audible alert to let you know when it starts and when it finishes. So right now this drive is getting uh, dumped on, and when that beep happens, I'll know I can pull the drive out. So that's pretty useful. And then you'll have those files accessible to you under the uh, USB backup section here. You also can attach external drives to grab files off of them. So this is useful if you wanted to bring photos or files into your B station from an external drive. So you can back up the external drive and then in the separate section here, you can access the files that are on the drive without having to back them up first. And you've got your recent here, which looks at the things that you've done recently. You also have the ability to share files with others just with a link, similar to how you would do it on Dropbox and Google Drive. And here you can see what you're sharing and manage all of that here. I'm just going to pop over to the B Photos app real quick so you can see how this looks on the website. It does take a second for it to load up here, but we'll be seeing it shortly. And there we go. So now we've got, again, a very similar interface to what we had on the phones earlier. And I can jump in and browse by faces. Uh, you can make albums on here, by the way, as well. So I can go here and take a look at my... Uh, photos that I put in before. By the way, if you want to identify people in photos, what you do is you go up to the little I here, and you can see that we've got a person here that isn't yet named. So if I just go up in here and name it Ellie, now I have logged her. So it didn't know who I was before I told it who I was, but there you go. So pretty simple stuff here. It works. It gives you a web interface you can access from anything, or you can use the mobile apps if you want. Now, let's take a look at some of the more advanced features here, especially if you want to add additional users to your device. Now, to administer your device, what you have to do is click on the application button up here at the top, and then you go over to system settings. And here you will get at a lot of the things that you may want to get at, especially if you are a more advanced user. So right out of the gate here, we can see what our storage situation is looking like. You'll also see here that I have two users set up. They're both my name, but they're actually separate distinct accounts. And if you go into the users section here, this is where you can add additional users. You can have up to eight plus yourself. So you could easily fit, I think, a family on one of these. And of course, you can always add more B drives if you want. The more advanced Synology devices don't have these user limitations. So just bear, bear that in mind if you have more you might want to step up to the other device. One thing that I could not do, though, is see what the other users have inside of their storage space, at least through the interfaces that are available to me. So that's one thing to keep in mind there, although you can share folders between them. Now, if I wanted to add a user here, I just click Add, and it'll make a link that I can send out uh, via a text message just by doing a copy and paste deal or sending it via email, and they have seven days to redeem their account. Now, once they do that, they will get their own distinct interface. They'll log into Synology with their user ID, and everything they have, again, will be isolated from you. They can work in their own space without seeing any of the stuff that you have unless you directly share it with them. Now, the system section here gives you the ability to rename your B station and get some of the other technical information about the unit. The backup and restore section here is important. Now, this is different than the backups we were doing before, where we were backing things up into the B station. You also need to worry about backing the B station up itself. And the reason why is because there's only a single mechanical hard drive in here, and that could fail at some point. So you definitely need a backup strategy for taking the data off of here and putting it onto another device or sending it up to the cloud. You've got two USB ports here on the back for doing that. So you can keep one free for attaching external drives for data transfers and then have the backup drive permanently attached. I've got this Samsung drive right now plugged into its USB Type-C port. Now, if I click on Backup Now, as you can see here, I can set it up to go to the external drive, or I can use Synology C2 storage service, which you have to pay for. But the external drive is probably the easiest way to go here. And I can set this up to fire off every day at midnight. I can also encrypt them with a password. So you do have some security there. I'm just going to leave it unencrypted for now. 
and I'm going to click done. And now I've got this backup set up and I can start it off right now and have it go. It looks like though it only pairs up with one drive for backing up, which makes it a little difficult to do off-site swaps here. So that's something I would like to see them improve. But you've got the backup and this backs up the entire system. So if this fails and you get a new one, you plug your drive in and you're good to go. Additionally, the backups are accessible on other devices using Synology's Hyper Backup Explorer app, which is something that works with their more advanced devices as well. So even if you don't have another B drive, you can still get at the files should something go awry on there. So that's an important function to get set up, especially when you start loading in a lot of your important data on it. Updates are handled here. It will keep itself up to date provided you have this enabled. I definitely suggest doing that on these network attached devices because you never know when some security thing might pop up. These devices rely a lot on open source software. So if there's a vulnerability in one of the libraries that they use, you wanna make sure you keep this up to date to close those up quickly. And Synology has been pretty good about doing that. So just make sure you got those updates going. Now in advanced settings, this is where things get a little more interesting. They have a local account feature. And this is a feature that I would strongly recommend enabling because if your internet connection goes down and you don't have this enabled, you can't get into the B station here, even on your local network. So by setting up the local account, what it will do is let you create a username and password so that you can get at this thing locally, even without an internet connection. And you can go to the IP address that you have on your local network that the B drive was assigned, or you just go up to your web browser and type in HTTPS colon slash slash B station, and that will take you right in. But just be aware that if you don't have this enabled and you lose your internet, you can't get at your files. Also of note, the users that you allow to set up their own accounts on here will not be able to access the drive without an internet connection, even with local accounts set up. So just bear all that in mind. This is one of the limitations of this more simpler version of a Synology NAS. The local account only is for the administrator. You'll also see another option here called SMB service. And by enabling this, it will allow you to get at your drive over the network the same way you might be able to do with a traditional NAS. But they give you a warning here that they don't want you uploading photos to home photos because it might mess up the B Photos app. So you have to acknowledge that, and then this will be available to you via your network in a more traditional way. This is probably a more advanced feature for basic use, but if this is something that you want to be able to do, they have an option for it. And once you enable that SMB feature, you will see the B station showing up here along with all of the other servers and computers on your network. When you browse through here, you can see all the files that your main account stored on here. So you can get at stuff like we were doing before, but you won't have access to the other users here. You also get access to the external drives that are plugged in as well. So cool stuff, but not as feature rich as some of the other more advanced Synology products are. So what do I think of the B station? Well, I have seen many attempts over the years at companies trying to create a very simple and easy to use self-hosted cloud drive. This one, I think, probably does the best at that function. It's nowhere near as advanced as all of the other Synology products that they make. This is a very different product for them, but it's really the first product that they've put together that's very much focused on general consumers. And I think as such, if you have someone in your life who is a general consumer, who just wants something simple that works, I think this might be a good solution for people that are trying to avoid the cloud and want to have more control over their data. If you are someone with a technical background or someone who's not afraid of more complicated setups, the other Synology devices will be much better for that. But I think for the target audience here, this does pretty well with minimal compromises. So that's why I like it. It's certainly going to have an ROI because you will uh, basically save what you might be paying a cloud provider for after the first year or so. And the apps feel pretty polished even in this early state. And I'm sure over time they might be able to add more to it. 
So again, if you're a higher end user, this is not for you, but I think for the target audience, they've done quite well with this one. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.